live on Twitter. Question time, extra time on BBC Radio 5 Live. Right, thank you very much. Thank you uh, for, for coming in. Mr Pinar, uh, question time starting here in about 20 minutes time. Yeah, that's so. It's a, it's a lively looking looking panel we've got uh, this evening. We'll, we'll, we'll go over the over the, the cast list again before the, the show kicks off. But we've got we've got a senior conservative Liz Truss. We've got Douglas Alexander from Labour, Vince Cable from the Liberal Democrat, always good value. And Caroline Lucas from the Greens and a, and a and a Daily Telegraph blogger Tim Stanley. So that's one to look forward to. Certainly, it's a it's a lively campaign. It should be a lively program. With all this talk of the election campaign, there's still concerns that many people who want the vote won't get a chance to because they haven't registered in time. Yeah, there are 11 days left to sign up and it can be done online in just a couple of minutes at the official website, gov.uk forward slash register to vote. That's, that's, what, the, that's the website. Yeah, that's what more than one million people have done in the past three weeks, but hundreds of thousands more could miss out unless they register by the deadline of the 20th of April. So we want to know what you think about voting. Is it something we all have a duty to do? Or have you decided to opt out for political reasons or for other reasons. Give us a call, 0500 909693. We want to hear from you and give us a text, 85058. Well, let's speak to Jodie Lovham, who are from Bridge End in South Wales, 23. Hello, Jodie. Hi there. Hello there. You've decided not to vote. Tell us why. Um, basically, it's just a multitude of reasons. Um, I think it stems fundamentally from a lack of education um, in the education system itself. Um, as a child, we were never really told what politics is, what it's about, how it affects us, how the system even works. And I think as a legacy of that, that sort of imposed how I feel now about politics in general. I find it quite inaccessible. Um, I think there's an assumed level of knowledge in politics that even when you try and educate yourself as a 23-year-old graduate, um, things are quite inaccessible when you're trying to read a manifesto, you can't really gauge what's being said. Um, and that's coming from someone who does actually have a measure of education. So, so yeah. is this about a, a confidence in yourself then? Because you sound articulate. Why are you not confident to vote for who appeals to you? Um, and it's not that I'm not confident to vote for who appeals to me. It's just that nobody does appeal to me. Um, I think especially with the voting system the way that it is, I mean, in my constituency, I only realistically have two choices to vote for, um, or else my, my vote probably won't count anyway. Um, and the two choices that I have, uh, I wouldn't want to vote for. Um, so I think that, that does me quite an injustice, because I feel that even if I did want my voice to be heard, then it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be seen to be heard anyway. What are you looking for someone to say? I'm just looking for somebody who actually represents me and my interests. Like well, what does that from, mean? So what would, what would the big, big top-line issue be for you that would rock your boat? I just want to me, it's, it's about people and not so much the policies, because I just want to see somebody who looks a bit like me, sounds a bit like me, and who I think understands what actually matters to me, and that's just really being a normal, ordinary, working-class person. It's interesting. Will Best listening to this, Jody. Will's yeah. uh, TV presenter, ambassador for Use Your Voice. Hello, Will. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Yes. What do you make of what Jody said? I think it's really interesting, and I think a lot of people feel the same way that Jody does. But it's just interesting listening, Jody, to to what you're saying about the need to you know feel that you would like to vote for somebody who represents you, represents your interests. I think part of the problem that we've got is that young people have such bad turnout in elections and so few young people are registered to vote that there's no need for any of the major political parties to present anybody who fits that bill or who does talk to us. And young people have suffered quite badly as a result. I mean, you only have to look at things like housing, where there's, you know, young people are facing the biggest housing crisis we have in decades and decades because, but because we're not homeowners, but 55-year-olds who own a house, etc., they're very comfortable... Um, and they are catered for, and it's the same with public spending cuts that affect young people more than older people because we're not going to go out there and 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 vote, um, you know, against things which you know we don't really. But you could only the vote for will. Well, the thing is that can change, and and I think in in this particular election, I think it's really important that people stop thinking about wasted votes because there isn't really any such thing as a wasted vote. I mean, even if let's say you wanted to vote green. Um, who are a party that I do think appeal to lots of young people, maybe they're not going to win in your area, but it's not a wasted vote because if the Greens got 20% of the overall vote in the next election, the major parties will have to start incorporating some of those policies into what they do 
because they will want to woo those voters to themselves. Or let's say the Greens won two seats. Maybe they might become really important seats in a, in a hung parliament. So I think the idea of a wasted vote is not, it's not really the case anymore. Go on, Julie. Um, well, to be honest, I quite like to vote for the Greens if some of their policies weren't so ridiculous. Um, I think I agree. I agree with it. I agree with them with their sentiment and what they're saying with it, with most of their ideology. And um, I wouldn't want to vote for the Green Party because I think some of their policies are just completely unworkable and a bit naive. Um, so it, it's not so much that I think that my my vote would be wasted if I if I voted for them because I I wouldn't actually want to vote for them even though I I agree with some of what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think it's, I think there's a vicious circle that people say that young people aren't engaged in politics, so politicians gear their policy towards the older generation. Um, but then, how can young people be expected to want to vote or to want to vote if the policies are geared, to, if the policies aren't geared towards them in the mm -hmm. first place? Um, so it works both ways. All right. Well, I want to bring in someone here who I think is involved in this thing on the ground and knows something about how people are talking or not talking or not wanting to talk about politics. Sophie Stevens is involved in two groups that encourage people to, to vote, to engage in politics. One is Citizens UK, and the other one is Patchwork, which tries to engage minority communities and underrepresented communities of, of different kinds. Now, I know the organisation, I know, I know what this is about. I'm one of the patrons, as I say. I'm in favour of people taking an interest in politics, politically neutral, though I may be. Good evening to you, Sophie. Okay. Just tell us, what is it, if, if you can put your finger on it, that... that that people, that communities that, that take little interest in politics may have in common in taking that view or refusing to take any position on politics? Well, I think ch things have changed over the last few years. I think, in a way, there's a, people have dissociated voting with being involved and interested in politics and democracy. And I think that's over years of kind of frustration and our system and people not feeling like their vote's going to count. And just tonight, there are hundreds of young people who have organised their own first-time voters hustings um, in East London with Citizens UK, and they are pinning politicians on the agenda that they care about, which they've designed for themselves around employability skills. Yeah. And so I think that, that actually it's not fair to generalise young people or apathetic communities, um, because there are pockets of people who are getting involved. And Patrick, I think, demonstrates that throughout the year they're doing these masterclasses, getting young people to come into Parliament from ethnic minority backgrounds to see and engage with politicians. And I don't think that's a bit of a dissociation then between, actually, does that mean that all this participation and engagement I have with these politics, does that translate to me putting a cross in a box on some random day that's designed by somebody else? And I think it's about working with people to kind of see how those things do connect up, but that we do have to be participating all year round, every year, doesn't matter if it's the election or not. Well, what's the um, secret? I mean, how, how, is there a way that you seem to have perhaps found, upon if, if it exists, to, yeah. to win people round to the idea that, that taking an interest in politics and the running of our country is a good thing to do, that matters to them and should matter to them? So what's really interesting is that we have been working with five young Muslim women at the Images and College in Islington, North London, and they basically really felt passionate about being involved in their community and in politics and, um, and getting excited about issues that are meaningful to them around jobs and, and housing. But what they did is then persuade 500 of their fellow uh, sixth formers to then register to vote. And they've got 100 of them to march up to Islington Town Hall and deliver their 500 voter registration forms. Almost in a way because they want to take control of the fact that they do have a voice and they want to use it. And I think if you can find through our institutions, through our schools, through faith institutions, universities, you can find ways to educate people. Like Jodie was saying, this isn't, it's stopped being part of our kind of DNA. And I think there's a huge responsibility of our institutions to then teach people about politics and get them to have a practical experience of, of participating. Look, you heard, you heard Jodie there just a moment ago. Imagine she's on the doorstep and she says, I'm not interested. I'm just not going to take part in this. What are you going to say to her? Well, I guess my relationship to Dodie wouldn't be as some random person who knocks on our door. Both Patrick and citizens use networks of relationships, institutions. So it would be actually someone that Jodie's at university with or friends from school who's involved saying, actually, Jodie, I actually think it is important for you to get involved, even if you're not going to vote. And that's a choice that everyone has the right to make. You absolutely must get registered because if you don't register, no one even notices that you haven't voted. You're just irrelevant on the system. And I think it's absolutely important that people first start by registering and then start figuring out who they're going to vote for.
Are you convinced, Jodie? I, I am ready to vote, yeah. Um, but I, I am, I'm having my voice heard right now, and it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> But I'm, I'm part of the BBC generation. 2015 cohort so I've been participating in lots of um, BBC political output and I am becoming very politically engaged but I think mm. there's a difference between being engaged in the subject matter and that actually translating into a vote on election day. Would you stand yourself? Would you be interested in politics yourself at some stage? Potentially. Because <laughs> that's, a, that's, yeah. a, that's another way to do it well isn't it? But if you don't like any of these people try to affect change by being one of them. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, you know, as Sophie said, there are so many ways of being engaged in politics now that, you know, actually voting can just be one small part of your own personal engagement with the political landscape. And the more young people that are engaging in the political landscape, the more we can actually affect real change in it. And I think it's a really exciting time. And I think this is actually a really exciting election. Yeah, I think it's sad that we, if we have to measure participation in democracy is just on how many people turn out on election day mm. because it's just not reflective of, of the diversity of people who are genuinely involved uh, in their local communities. Okay, really interesting stuff. Julian and Will, thank you very much indeed. And to you, Sophie, thank you. Question time starting very, very soon uh, here on Five Live with David Dimbleby. Stay with us for that. The news comes next.